Hello everybody, I'm back with another video for you today. A second video, in fact. I haven't done one of these in a while, but I figured Anna Henrietta did uh, get revealed this evening, and I figured, you know what, I'm just going to react to it. Why not? Multiple videos in a day, that's all good, that's fine. Uh, and I, of course, wanted to give some thoughts about this leader. It's pretty interesting, and a lot of people are, of course, talking about it, and I want to just give my hot take uh, as well. So let's watch the video, as always. Uh, the leader spotlight, and then I'll give my impressions after. Though the Duchess of Toussaint seems a creature of comfort, inspiring others to treason is her favorite parlor game. To serve one's ruler is an honor. Okay, so pretty straightforward effect. It says right there on the screen. Order, create, and play a card from your opponent's hand. Uh, and we know her, pr her provision cost is 15, or rather the amount of provisions you get with her is 15. So the same as Calvit. How good is this ability? How does it stack up to the other Nilfgaard leaders, to other leaders in general? Uh, what is going on with this? Will it be good? Um, so first impressions. Obviously it's got the create tag. Now often people are going to jump at that and say, oh no, create. It's random. It's, it's just an RNG effect. But... You can, of course, play around this to quite a big extent, uh, having knowledge of your opponent's hand on what deck maybe that they're playing, what cards they've already played or they might be holding on to. That's going to give you information on what they have, and of course you can save this for later in a round when there's fewer cards in the opponent's hand and get a guaranteed pick of one of their last plays. Uh, you know, a lot of decks are going to be very predictable in that last kind of play or couple of plays, potentially. Now there's counterplay to this as well because you can maybe play your stronger cards earlier in the round and try to save kind of the weaker cards in the same way that you try to play around maybe Pitfall Trap in Squirtel. Uh, it's probably not as easy to play around because Anna can of course pop it off the ability on three cards or even, even more if they want to. Whereas with Pitfall Trap you have to uh, kind of play it and then get the only the next unit, right? So you, you're able to kind of... Um, save fewer bad cards, should we say, to play around it. This one you'd have to have quite a weak uh, hand in the first place for it to actually deny the Anna value, so pretty much that means this will probably be quite good in general. The amount of points you're going to get from this is going to be significant. The question is, will it be Will it be worthwhile? Will it be better than something like Ardle? Ardle is going to get you eight points, potentially even more if you are able to steal an engine, and that's a minimum. You might even get more if you're playing, uh, you know, more tactics in your deck if you're stealing a 5-strength unit, a uh, 5-strength engine even, you can get 10 plus points. Will Anna get that same amount of points? I don't think she will most of the time, especially because often cards your opponent might have in their hand will be things that synergize with their board particularly, uh, or which they want to use for their strategy more than you would, so you're maybe going to want to just take the big value tempo cards, and there aren't that many of those that that are beyond 10 points in a lot of decks at the moment, and with the expansion I'm not sure if they will be either. There's also a lot of cards that are just based on synergy, shielding, uh, maybe bleed vitality or whatever, that you might not want to get later in a round, um, steal from the opponent or whatever. Basically, if you're taking an opponent's card, it probably isn't as good as playing your own, but if you're able to find um, one of their very strong later plays, then sure. That will be quite good. 15 provisions though, I'm not sure that's really good enough to be better than something like Ardul, potentially more run as well, because that is of course a pretty uh, big bonus if you're playing one of those leaders, you get extra provisions on top of uh, the effect. So Anna's kind of in the middle, I think, in terms of Nilfgaard leaders. That effect seems quite good, um, but it is a little bit RNG dependent. In certain situations, you need to make sure your opponent is running a card that's actually good for you. Um, to get real value from it. It does definitely proc Assimilate, so that's something to keep in mind. If you're playing Assimilate cards, this will be very uh, a powerful effect for you. Will Assimilate be good? Well, that's another question. There are, I believe, three Assimilate cards in the game, two are bronzes, so you could put five in your deck in theory. Um, maybe that'll be a, a viable way to play Nilfgaard. I would imagine it won't be particularly strong because it's going to be a little bit vulnerable to removal. Um, you know, and you're not having enough engines like with Northern Realms maybe where you play a ton of them so that even having some removed isn't the end of the world. My anticipation would be that's not going to be a like a really high tier archetype, but it's probably something you can mess around with uh, and it's cool that there's a leader to support that type of archetype. 
um, and give it some love there. Of course, you can replay the effect with Damien as well if you want to, uh, you know, make sure you get a lot of value from, from that uh, assimilate effect. So all in all, I don't want to say it's bad because there's definitely some metas and some uh, matchups where this could be a very, very powerful effect. You know, things like against Arrakis Queen, you can maybe take a Forktail or Glusty uh, in a long round, kill all their drones or whatever. Uh, like some decks will be able to just, yeah, counter themselves basically with the cards they have in hand, so you'll be able to take advantage of that. But in general, I'm not sure this will be as strong as things like Ardol or Morvran in the, in the kind of bigger picture. Gonna have to wait and see on that one a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think she's somewhere in the middle in terms of Nilfgaard leaders, but with that kind of niche ability to counter certain strategies very well, and potentially a bit of use with, with the Assimilate archetype as well. So that's kind of my thoughts. But like, as you see there, I mean, they have, what, a Siren, a Kairon, and a uh, whatever else. So three cards that don't synergize with you. Playing this is really, like a really bad leader play, even though the assembly goes off. Okay, not a good example, but it kind of emphasizes the point that often your opponent might be playing cards that don't really work for you. Maybe you're against SK and they have like a, done of, uh, a load of cards that damage their own guys and you don't want to take one of them. Uh, you don't want to take a Berserk unit that won't trigger, sort of stuff like that. You don't want to take an engine from Northern Realms that they can just then remove. You don't want to take this or that. So I I, I think this might not work as well as it could in theory, uh, just because a lot of decks will be running cards that, that don't work with, with Nilfgaard in the way that you want, might want them to with Anna. But it could still generate quite a bit of value, right, if you are able to hit a good card, which maybe you will in some matchups. Also worth talking about, a lot of decks are running like Lacerate or Traps as their kind of final plays. Um, to really kill the row and make sure you get long-term value from it in round three. If you're able to steal a lacerate or something from the opponent, that can be a very good play. Um, so if that is the kind of the meta where you're doing like long, uh, long round value plays with like lacerate and whatnot, then taking that can be really devastating potentially. So there's potential. I think it's very meta dependent though. Uh, and, you know, you have to hope you're playing matchups where the opponent's playing cards that don't require synergy and they're playing cards that they have to hold on to later in the round as well. Um, to, for Anna to really work. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> just injected a few more thoughts there. My hounds would do better. My hounds would do better. Alright, so I don't really think I have much more to say on uh, the Anna Her Henrietta front. I think it's a fine ability, it's a pretty cool one, uh, and I don't think it will be too weak either. It will probably be somewhere in the middle in terms of Nilfgaard leaders. How does it stack up to the other leaders that have been revealed? I really can't say, guys. I really can't say. Um, I think she'll be played in some kind of competitive aspect uh, at some point. If it's just a niche sort of meta cool thing, then that would be very possible. But it could also be that it's just pretty reliably decent in an assimilate deck or just to gain a bit of value from your opponent's play and a bit of information on their hand, potentially. Uh, either way, yeah, I don't think it's as bad or as, uh, you know, uh, detrimental an effect uh, for the game as some people are making it out to be. Um, cool enough leader. I get that it's maybe not what some people wanted, but... I think it's perfectly good and pretty cool for the game. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Some uh, some brief or maybe not so brief thoughts on Anna Henrietta. Let me know if you agree, disagree. Uh, of course, Crimson Curse will be coming out in a matter of hours at this point. I'm so excited to start making some really great decks. So do subscribe if you want to check that stuff out. I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.